Number 1. Star Wars The Old Republic began development in 2005 under BioWare, with over 200 plus people working on the game. Number 2. Star Wars The Old Republic was in development for almost six years, making it one of the longest development periods for an MMO. 3. The official release date for Star Wars The Old Republic was December 20th, 2011. 4. The game features over 200,000 lines of recorded voice dialogue, making it one of the most voice acted games ever made. 5. Star Wars The Old Republic was published by EA, Electronic Arts, one of the most beloved gaming companies in the world. 6. At launch, BioWare faced a ton of criticism for the game's lack of content at endgame, as well as very poor balancing early on. This certainly did not help the game during its first couple of weeks after release. 7. Despite whatever cons, however, SWOTOR did struggle a lot with server overloads and crashes early on due to the sheer amount of people who were playing this game. 8. The game's soundtrack features over five hours of original Star Wars music. The composers who worked on the game including Gordy Hab, Jesse Harlan, Wilbert Roge, Lenny Moore, Steve Kirk, Peter McConnell, Jared Emerson Johnson, and Mark Grisky. 9. Star Wars The Old Republic has six expansions in total so far. Some are kind of small, some are more major, but six expansions in all. 10. An episode of The Big Bang Theory exists where the characters in the show all play Star Wars The Old Republic over a whole weekend. This was great promotional material for the game early on. 11. According to some websites, but we can't be 100% certain because we don't have the hard data, SWOTOR peaked at a population of 1.7 million active players at the height of its lifespan. 12. The Jedi Knight is the most played class in SWOTOR. 13. The Smuggler is the least played class in SWOTOR. 14. Across the galaxy, you can find these things called Datacrons, which will give you permanent stat boosts to your character. This fun little collection mechanic was a great way in the game to encourage people to do exploration and discovery. 15. There are hollow terminals that you can find in SWOTOR that can provide you with news updates and lore through what's called the hollow net. 16. The forward slash sit and forward slash chair emotes in the game allow you to sit literally anywhere in the game. 17. To get your very own HK companion in the game, players have to undergo a giant galaxy-wide scavenger hunt for parts. You then have to assemble them, and boom, you're just like Darth Revan back in the first KOTOR game. And speaking of Knights of the Old Republic, 18. Star Wars The Old Republic was made as a sequel to the single-player RPGs KOTAR 1 and KOTAR 2. 19. The Jedi Master Satil Shan in SWOTOR is descended from Bastila Shan from KOTAR 1. 20. Darth Revan, that iconic Sith Lord from KOTAR 1, got his very own expansion in Star Wars The Old Republic, where the Republic and the Empire create a ceasefire in order to stop Revan from summoning the Sith Emperor into the physical form to defeat him. Both factions felt that Revan was insane for even attempting such a thing, and so they did everything in their power to stop him. 21. This MMO holds the Guinness World Record for largest entertainment voiceover project in a video game. 22. No, you cannot play as a Wookiee in Star Wars The Old Republic. 23. However, if you do decide to play as a smuggler, you can have a Wookiee companion character to follow you around and rip people's arms off. Wookiees are known to do that. 24. One of the things that made SWOTOR unique as an MMO is it offered a system to players called Crew Skills. As you gathered companions in the galaxy, these individuals could accompany you into the open world, they could do crafting for you, as well as fill the spot of a tank healer or DPS in a dungeon if you couldn't find that last player for your group. 25. The game introduced the first same-sex romance options in the Star Wars universe of games. 26. To make SWOTOR feel more rewarding than other MMOs, BioWare decided to give each player their own unique starship to travel the galaxy in. There are six unique ships across the eight classes. 27. The Rise of the Hut Cartel expansion introduced the planet Makeb to the Star Wars canon of lore, a planet under control of the Huts. 28. 
In SWOTOR, raids are called operations because operations just sound so much cooler than raids. 29. The Eternity Vault was this game's first operation. 30. Battlegrounds in Star Wars The Old Republic are called War Zones. 31. During the development of SWOTOR, fans began to attack one of the game's writers, Jennifer Hepler, for revealing that she doesn't even enjoy gaming or games in general. This earned her the nickname Hamburger Helper from the community, and she received so much hate and so much backlash from the community that she left Bioware altogether. 32. The development cost of SWOTOR was over $200 million, making it the most expensive video game ever made back in its day. 33. The Sith Emperor Vitiate in SWOTOR holds the record for being the longest living Sith Lord. He lived for over 1,500 years. 34. In honor of the Rack Ghoul section in KOTAR 1, if you guys remember that, SWOTOR has its very own in-game event called the Rack Ghoul Plague. 35. SWOTOR's first expansion raised the level cap to 55. 36. This MMO has a legacy system where players can create a family tree that connects their characters across their different classes. 37. The Sith Warrior class allows a player to take on the role of a Sith apprentice to Darth Barriss. Now, Darth Barriss quickly became known in the community as Darth Barriss the Wide. Devourer of sandwiches, destroyer of worlds. 38. In SWOTOR, you can play as multiple alien races, from Sith purebloods to Twi'leks. You can even be a cyborg. How cool is that? I'll be back. 39. SWOTOR can either be played for free or with a subscription, which gives you access to more perks in the game. 40. According to some, Jaysa is the best companion in this game. You can get her if you play as a Sith warrior, and let's just say she can go a little crazy if you lead her down the dark side path. And by crazy, I mean like, BDSM kink kind of crazy. 41. As a Jedi Knight character, you actually get to face the Sith Emperor one-on-one -on -one at the conclusion of your story. But no spoilers here for what happens next. 42. In SWOTOR, dungeons are called flashpoints. Why? I don't know. Kind of strange. Whatever. 43. The game takes place 3,000 years before the events of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. 44. The Jedi Consular is considered the worst class storyline in this game. 45. The Imperial Agent is considered the best class storyline in this game. Now these views are of course subjective and it depends from person to person. 46. Hutball, one of the war zones in SWOTOR, has been a very divisive battleground since its day one release. In Hutball, you'll pass a ball around while trying to kill enemy players, trying to make it past the enemy's goal line and scoring a point for your team. 47. Daniel Erickson, one of the lead writers on SWOTOR before its release, was the one who came up with the idea of Hutball. He said that he envisioned the huts finding it very entertaining, seeing these little creatures passing around a ball. It's what led to the creation of the war zone. 48. The conquest system in this game allows guilds to fight for control of planets. 49. The Knights of the Fallen Empire expansion shifted the direction of SWOTOR immensely in the direction of being more of a single-player RPG-focused game, with some MMO elements sprinkled in. 50. You can visit Yavin 4 in SWOTOR. You might remember this planet from Star Wars Episode 4. 51. One of the most hated planets in this game is Hoth. And the reason why is because of how blindingly bright the snow is. You're going to need sunglasses to level on this planet. Let's put it that way. 52. The Ruins of Terrace, which was the planet that was destroyed in KOTAR 1, you can visit this planet in Star Wars The Old Republic. 53. Space missions in SWOTOR are these single-player game modes where a player can fly around in their personal starship, fighting other ships, taking down enemy space stations, and so on and so forth. It's kind of like Star Fox, to make a comparison, if you guys have ever played that. Do a barrel roll. 54. SWOTOR's expansion Galactic Starfighter, however, introduced space-based player-versus-player combat to the game. And this was a much-welcomed addition as PvE space combat you know, on rails, it kind of gets a little dull after a few years' time, but still a lot of fun, though. 55. The voice actor for Vet, the first Sith warrior companion, is the same voice actor for Mission in KOTAR 1. In fact, a lot of previous KOTAR voice actors returned to do work for this game. 56. 
Swotor follows the standard tank, heal, and DPS formula common to most MMOs these days. Before launch, a lot of people were hoping that Swotor would do something a little different, maybe adding a new twist to the MMO formula, but I guess Bioware just decided to play it safe. 57. One of the biggest complaints that many had about this game was that the worlds felt too small, especially if you compared them to the world sizes of the previous Star Wars MMO, Star Wars Galaxies. 58. SWOTOR was released five days after Star Wars Galaxy's servers were shut down. 59. The Praxon Firaxa is one of the rarest mounts in the game. Some would even say it is the rarest. 60. Starforge is the largest US server for SWOTOR players, and Darth Malgus is the largest server for the EU players. 61. The SWOTOR team, the people who actually make the game, they are known for going into Twitch streams of people who stream their game and giving away free game time keys. 62. The Outlaw's Den on Tatooine is a PvP area where players can engage in open world combat. 63. The Sith Inquisitor has more opportunities to force choke somebody compared to the Sith Warrior. 64. If you're a newcomer to this game, you can type forward slash newcomer once you're in game to join the newbie chat channel. 65. Some flashpoints in SWOTOR play out entirely different depending on the player choices and dialogue throughout the storyline. There'll be different bosses, different objectives, so on and so forth. It's really cool. 66. Nowadays, you can solo flashpoints, being given droids to accompany you in combat so that you don't always need to rely on finding other players. This is not an option for higher difficulty flashpoints, however. 67. Darth Malgus has become somewhat of a meme in the SWOTOR community in that he keeps being defeated and then somehow he returns over and over. It's kind of like Palpatine, I guess. 68. The Bounty Hunter is considered the best class voice actor in the game due to his tone and his wit. He's also got a lot of really good one-liners. 69. BioWare recently surrendered control of SWOTOR to Broadsword Entertainment. We made a whole video about this recently over on the channel if you want to check it out after this one. 70. One of the things that made this game unique as an MMO was the idea of saber locking. Instead of enemies just swinging randomly at air or at enemies, the developers wanted lightsabers and melee weapons to actually collide with each other, just like in the Star Wars movies. This made combat vastly more visually pleasing, especially if you're a high-level Jedi deflecting blaster bolts from lower-level mobs. This is awesome. 71. SWOTOR has a strict no-add-on policy, unlike other games like World of Warcraft. This is to prevent the game from being dumbed down by add-ons doing everything for the player. The way in which the game is designed means that making add-ons is pretty much impossible for SWOTOR. 72. Manan, a planet that players could go to in Kotar 1, it became a visitable planet in SWOTOR with the Shadow of Revan expansion, with a buildable stronghold on the planet being added later on in the game. It wasn't until the Legacy of the Sith expansion, however, that a full explorable Manan was introduced into the game, along with underwater sections. 73. Galactic Strongholds was an expansion that introduced guild starships to the game, which could be customized by guilds with things found throughout the galaxy. And these ships are massive, let me tell you what. 74. The Galactic Strongholds expansion also allowed players to get their very own strongholds on planets, like Manan, which they could decorate with collectibles found all throughout the galaxy, as well as from on the cartel market. Think of it like a player house, just a lot bigger. 75. In the game, you can travel to any person's home, flagship, or stronghold that is set to public if you so desire. Doing this certainly helps with getting new ideas for your decorations. 76. The Sith Inquisitor storyline in SWOTOR focuses on giving to players the Palpatine power fantasy in Star Wars. Lightning, Sith alchemy, the politics, it's what it's all about. 77. The Sith Warrior, in contrast, is meant to embody the fantasy of being Darth Vader. Large, intimidating, force-choking people, it's great. 78. More people play Empire than Republic in this game. 79. There are 8 playable classes in Star Wars The Old Republic. 80. There are 12 playable races in this game. 81. 
In Star Wars lore, Darth Sidious would often dream of Darth Malgus from SWOTOR being his apprentice. Sidious saw Malgus as a better version of Darth Vader, seeing as Malgus destroyed the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, he sustained multiple massive injuries during his war against the Jedi, and yet his rage continued to make him a threat to the entire galaxy. He was not held back by self-pity or regret like Vader was. 82. The cutscene length for all the class storylines combined is 104 hours. 83. Player companions can be used at any time in this game to sell all the greys in your inventory, and that's very convenient. 84. When playing in a group with other players, if a dialogue option appears where everybody gets to choose a response, a roll is done, and the player with the highest roll gets to speak. It's always great when you're playing a good guy Sith and the dude named Vader with three R's in his name standing beside you decides to butcher some innocent officer with his lightsaber while you just stand there and watch helplessly. It's great. 85. Star Wars The Old Republic takes place 300 years after the events of KOTAR 1 and 2. 86. The cartel market is SWOTOR's in-game store where players can purchase cosmetics and unlocks. 87. SWOTOR has dark and light alignment rewards. This means that certain items in the game cannot be used unless you are evil or good enough to use them. These items are just entirely cosmetic, however. 88. There is a Unify Colors option in SWOTOR, which can be used to make all your gear match in color, so that way you don't look like a giant multicolored galactic idiot. 89. SWOTOR boasts a very large role-playing community in 2023. In fact, some would say that it's the game's dedicated role-play community that's keeping the game alive. 90. Yes, you can earn the title of Darth in this game if you are a Sith character. 91. The popular YouTuber Nixium created a massive guild in SWOTOR recently called Bark's Root Beer, whose sole purpose was to get Bioware to send him a case of root beer. Despite many streams and hundreds of thousands of views on videos, they still never have, even to this day. 92. There is an event in the game called the Narshada Nightlife that runs from July into August. During this event, players can visit the planet of Narshada and engage in a ton of gambling-like activities. It's like going to a casino, but in Star Wars. 93. When SWOTOR was first released, five unique official LEGO packs were released alongside it. This included things like the Fury-class Interceptor from the game to Jedi Starships. 94. SWOTOR cinematics are made by Blur Studios, the same group who makes cinematics for other MMOs like Elder Scrolls Online. But the most recent SWOTOR cinematic for Legacy of the Sith was made by Industrial Light and Magic, the visual effects company founded by George Lucas to make special effects for the very first Star Wars film. 95. SWOTOR and ESO have something in common in that they both run off the same hero engine. SWOTOR's engine, however, is very heavily modified, which has led to some of the jankiness and the bugs that can be found and experienced in SWOTOR. Yeah. 96. According to some estimates, 12 million 146,893 people worldwide have tried this game. 97. If you want to look like Darth Malgus from all the cinematics, you can actually purchase his cosmetic armor off of the Cartel Market store. 98. You can also buy the armor of Obi-Wan Kenobi, if you so desire. 99. In SWOTOR, you can get an R2-D2 look-alike droid called MT-4T. Just look at this little guy. Isn't he cute? and 100. In the end, the reason why this game didn't do as well as it could have was because many people felt that SWOTOR was just too much like a single player game with some MMO elements sprinkled in here and there. The game certainly was an incredible undertaking and it did deliver some A plus storytelling and adventure, but unfortunately, it's been forgotten by most. Thanks for watching everybody.